Blizzard has given me exclusive access to Warcraft Rumble for the past two weeks. So in today's video, I'm going to do everything I can in order to tell you everything that I know about Warcraft Rumble so far. And the way that I'm going to do this is that I'm going to literally show you guys every single game mode that is possible within this game, as well as going into as much detail as I can about the shop, different minis that are available, as well as the dungeons versus the PvP aspect of the game. Because one thing that's really important to note about uh, Warcraft Rumble is that it's a combination of doing PvE missions, uh, doing PvE dungeons, and then repeating some of the PvE missions for experience, and then uh, during those times that you get stuck on certain missions you can always use pvp and quests in order to level up your characters or to progress in a much different way so to just get things off started very simply the first mission that you will uh, be access to is the elwyn forest with five different bosses and there are essentially i believe a hundred bosses that are possible within this game as you can see by up here i have defeated 65 of them so far so i haven't seen uh, all the bosses and I definitely haven't beaten them all but every single boss has something that makes it unique with like a special ability or a special perk that makes it somewhat of a challenge in order to beat and these levels are going to be a little bit more important later which, which I will explain once we get to that point but as of right now I just want to show you guys what some of the gameplay mechanics will look like because as you can see I've definitely progressed through the game a little bit but before we jump into this I just want to show you guys what the shops and the minis actually look like so essentially what you have over over here is something called the grid. The grid has uh, a lot of different things that you can use to buy with coins and you obtain coins by defeating the boss missions that I was just talking about earlier. So after you beat a lot of bosses, you can start using your coins in order to get meaningful upgrades uh, like increasing the the stars which help you upgrade your heroes and we'll get to that here in a second uh, but regardless the biggest thing uh, that is important for newer players is the fact that this is where you can unlock new minis and uh, another way that you can unlock minis is uh, if you defeat the bosses then you get choices of troops leaders you get arc like surges you get other bits of bonuses for completing these missions and that is one of the reasons why you want to do this and one thing I really like about Warcraft Rumble overall is that every single one of these game modes kind of ties into each other in terms of like you want to do this in order to upgrade your leaders you want to do uh, another game mode in order to upgrade their abilities so all of these kind of play a hand at making your characters stronger so you have a sense of progression within the game uh, but as you're starting off you will uh, have minis in the shop available that you haven't bought but once you buy most of them and you unlock uh, and upgrade them then you get things that are called traits traits are essentially uh, a special ability that are available for your minis and we'll take a look at some traits here uh just to kind of give you guys an idea as of right now the characters that i've spent the most amount of time with have been blood mage thalnos as well as uh baron riven there but there are about 13 heroes ranging from you know horde alliance black rock mountain animal heroes as well as undead unbound heroes so there's five different factions and five different uh types of characters that you can fit into almost any comp just because you're playing a, a horde uh, leader does not mean that you can't not run uh, alliance members every single one of the minis that you unlock can be put into any of the leaders that you actually unlock uh, but to go into detail about the traits that I was talking about traits uh, are essentially extra abilities so like case in point with the prowler even though it might be a little bit hard to see right here uh, deal double damage to enemies who are at more than 75% health so you get these extra abilities when you unlock them and you upgrade them. So case in point, here is a regular common mini. And the way that you upgrade them is by gaining arc-like dust, which you get through dungeons, as well as those stars that I was mentioning earlier. I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying stars immediately because uh, you want to try and unlock all of the minis first, in my opinion. Uh, and there are a lot of minis, to say the least. There are 53 that I've collected out of the 54, and out of all of them... Uh, I think the only one that I'm missing is like a special reward, a special mini that's available after defeating like a challenge of some kind. So I don't know which one that I'm missing as of right now. But you have lots of different types of minis that range in different kinds of abilities as well as special strengths and weaknesses. So case in point, if we take a look at Abomination, it's probably a lot easier for me to show off the ability this way. Uh, but Abomination is a uh, is a is a tank minion essentially that has a special ability that can poison 
frozen uh, nearby enemies every three seconds. And there are a lot of traits that are available. I believe there are 191 traits as of right now, if I am remembering the information that I learned from the Creator Summon effectively, that really do help... Uh, customize these kind of abilities but you have to unlock them as you progress through the game this tanky mass of flesh and steel will hook ranged enemies drawing them uh drawing them into his cleave attack so cleave is a way of being able to, to damage a bunch of enemies all at once and the best way that you could see these traits is by actually going to the traits page where you can see it's a melee attacker he's a tank he's got a special hook ability as well as aoe damage uh, but what it doesn't really tell you is the weaknesses that he has and one way that you can see weaknesses of different characters is actually just going to this chart right here where you have range attackers you have winged attackers and then you have melee attackers so melee attackers are really good at destroying ranged minions because usually most ranged minions are going to have low hp versus uh melee attackers that have a lot of attack and strength behind them obviously the range attackers are going to be really good against your wing attackers because they're up in the air and you have a way of actually being able to interact with them the only people that can uh that can actually damage the winged minions is other winged minions as well as ranged attackers but there are some exclusions to this rule like gargoyle for example but gargoyles will only attack buildings and bosses and they'll ignore all of their distractions meaning that they will not actually attack uh, other minions and that does include other winged minions so depending on like abilities and stuff there might be some exclusions to what can attack what uh but to finish off this point winged attackers are also really good against melee attackers because melee attackers literally can't hit them they can't swing them so that's one way to be able to remember this is that's very similar to pokemon in, in a degree where you have one thing that beats another but everything does have its own weakness it's just a fancy way of playing rock paper scissors essentially and then you have uh, another uh, aspect of single attacks, uh, AoE attacks, as well as horde or group attacks, uh, like being able to summon a bunch of minions all at once. Like, for example, the footman. When you summon footman, he actually summons four other footmen along with them, and they are very tanky... Uh, very tanky melee attackers that can just take a lot of damage while you know attacking as a group in order to beat up on maybe like single target uh single target minions you also have a group of chickens which summons a bunch of chickens and they one chicken doesn't deal a lot of damage but as you can see what's going on right here which is honestly like, this is just probably the best way to look at what exactly a character does i love how they showcase this uh, but group attackers are really good at swarming single attackers and then AOE attackers are really good at dealing with uh, with group attackers and then the single attackers are good against the AOE guys most of the time because sometimes depending on the unit outside of like maybe like an abomination usually these kind of these type of minions don't have a lot of attack and are very susceptible to being hit really hard essentially so now that we know exactly how uh, these kind of minions attack let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay in order to really see these guys in action because i believe that warcraft rumble is one of those games where the more that you play it the more it starts to make sense and the easier that the game actually seems to be if you find the resources in this video helpful then please consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com to help support future content and future videos a huge shout out to all the people that are currently uh supporting the channel over on patreon to where you can get deck optimizations and hearthstone and i'll even do like some optimizations for rumble as well as well as coaching opportunities and of course being shouted out in future videos so if you would like to support the content so we can continue to make videos on this channel and stream on twitch then go ahead and check out the links down below so we're going to go ahead and jump back into the Elwyn Forest, and we're going to just defeat the first boss, Goldtooth, in order to show you guys exactly how the gameplay works. Because the way this game works is that every single mini costs gold, and in order to, uh, to get your gold back, you essentially just have to wait. Your gold is always is always refreshing, so it's really on you on how, to, how you utilize your gold in the most effective way possible. Well, let's go ahead and start a game and we'll see what's going on here. You have these towers, he's already throwing minions, and this is the special thing about this guy in particular, where if he ends up hitting gold, he gains 10 levels, so you really want to try and stop that. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you what happens when you don't attack. Your base can attack the other minions as well, so you're not just completely defenseless. Uh, but since my opponent threw out chickens, now I have to worry about this big boy coming over to beat me. So timing is very important when it comes to a game like this, because the more that you just sit around and don't do anything, your, your uh, uh, opponent's not going to let up. So you have to try and use your gold in the best way possible in order to defeat uh, minions. And since I'm explaining this and not really focusing on gameplay, I'm kind of getting eaten right now. 
but something to keep in mind is that levels are very important whenever it comes to this game. I'm gonna take the big guy, hopefully don't get countered, I got countered, and that is one way that you can see how this game has a lot of strategy that comes along with it. It's about the timing, it's about what you throw out, when you throw out, and it's about how you utilize your gold to the best uh, capabilities. Because the thing that you don't want to do in this game is just throw one minion, throw another, throw another, throw another. Sometimes you want to combine minis in order to get that combined strength versus where you're, you're actually covering for each other's weaknesses versus just trying to 1v1 everything, because that's not how this game is effectively played. So let's go ahead and actually try to beat this boss for real this time. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to take over this spot right here. Because one thing that I didn't talk about are these uh, these towers. Uh, there are guard towers that are a deploy zone, essentially. And a deploy zone is where you can, you know, deploy your minions, essentially. There are these as well as meeting stones, I believe they're called. And meeting stones will be available in different levels. And we might be able to showcase that when I get into the PvP. Uh, but for now, the one thing you need to know about guard towers is that they are weak against siege damage, so cards like gargoyle are really good. Big heavy hitters are what you want to throw to this, or maybe potentially some AoE. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw out minis that are really good at dealing with these guys. I've got a wolf that's going to be dealt with, hopefully, by my skeleton, since I have a big crowd that's dealing a lot of damage. And look at that gargoyle. That is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to siege damage in particular. So, I'm going to throw this over here in order to deal with this guy, and when he gets closer, I will summon the Banshee, and I will make sure there are no other minions that are available. But this Gargoyle is just going over here, and is kind of soloing the, uh, the boss as of right now. So it does kind of show you, like, how good Gargoyle can be by himself. Uh, there are no minions that are coming out this way, so I will go ahead and throw out the Banshee. Timing, again, is very important when it comes to this game. And the elementals for, are another example of a siege minion that'll just focus on destroying towers instead of destroying minions. So everything pretty much has like its own, uh, it's, I guess it's like its own utility and its own use. Uh, but as of right now, I need to go and kill my opponent. So I'm just going to throw the gargoyle and the gargoyle might actually solo this boss. So I am going to throw this guy to deal with this. I gotta deal with these minions, so maybe my Banshee can take over this other guy. I probably should have started mining for this gold, which is what the Kobolds do. The Kobolds uh, just are are a good way of being able to stall the game. But I need to be able to throw one more Gargoyle in order to win this game, so I'm gonna throw this away. Uh, I need to take over this guy, because he will hit me really hard, and oh god, oh god, I don't know if I have enough time. Come on, come on, get it. Okay, that was not a good example. But, hey man, at least I was closer that time. So let's try this one more time with maybe a slightly different strategy. But I'm going to go all in with the Gargoyle again because that just dealt a lot of damage. And if I can just, you know, solidify the other side, then this is where the strategy of the game and trying to change your game plan is really important. <laughs> Skeletons have uh, aerial attackers as well as melee attackers. That's why I love playing skeletons, because they feel just very versatile. So we can do this, take the gold. The gold is now ours. So we have more ways at putting him at a disadvantage while, uh, while propping up ourselves. Um, we'll throw out the Baron here because he's a fast minion. And I can take the gold yet again. So we're just denying his value while initiating our own value. Throw the gargoyle out here just to get him out. These guys will do a lot of damage. I'll hold on to gold for the time being to see what we're building up towards. That guy has been dealt with very effectively. I don't think I have to worry too much about the siege target. So I will do this. This guy is now dying. So we'll throw this over here in order to protect the gargoyle. So the gargoyle can hopefully solo. And there you have it. That is what happens when you beat a boss. Now, when you beat it for the first time, you will get uh, a certain amount of gold as well as uh, combat experience for your minis. It may not seem like that much uh, combat experience, uh, but as you level up your characters, you also get these things called tomes. Tomes uh, are essentially the fastest way of being able to level up your characters. And just to show you uh, what exactly tomes are, I am going to buy one in the shop. But as you can tell by these things right here, not only did I beat the bosses already, 
but there is a reward, uh, essentially a tome that you can get for every single time that you beat them with a hero of a different faction. So if I were to switch to Karen Bloodhoof, for example, and go back to the Elwyn Forest, you will see that these tomes are available. So let's go ahead and buy a tome in order to show you guys what would usually happen if you uh, defeat these things. Another thing I guess I should point out now that this thing is being shown, you get free experience or free gold every four hours. So this game really incentivizes you to log in a lot throughout the day. But let's go ahead and buy a tome and figure out how you level up your minis. So it said 720 experience total, which will be split up, I think, three times, and you can uh, use them on all of your minis, not just a specific one. But there you go. Level up that guy. That's how you increase your stats and whatnot. Uh, we can level up this guy as well. So boom, Blackrock Pyromancer is also increased in a level. And we'll put it on this guy because he really carried the last game. But there you have it. That's what happens when you beat bosses. You get gold, which you can use to buy stuff in the shop as well as to buy tomes. I'm not sure how much these tomes are worth buying in all honesty because you have a lot of ways of being able to find them by completing missions and defeating bosses with different characters. But now we've done the actual bosses to where... If you beat them for the first time, you get a sigil in order to unlock things. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and move on to what dungeons are. Because dungeons are actually a really interesting way of being able to play the game. To where I'm going to use uh, Old Murkai. Old Murkai is essentially like the zoo swarm person that just throws a bunch of token minions all at once. You get different relics that all, that upgrade your, your minis in different ways. And the reason why you want to do these is because you get arc-like uh, dust which essentially allows you to help upgrade your characters because you need dust as well as these little potions right here. This one upgrades to rare, this one upgrades to epic, and this one upgrades to legendary. This button is how you reset the shop. I can show you guys that here in a second. But let's go ahead and do a boss, and or let's do a dungeon and see how this works out. So my leader can gain a shield to nearby enemies, absorbing one attack. Deploying a beast mini also summons two raptors. I'm just going to go with raptors to show you guys how quickly this can get out of hand. These dungeons are going to have special rules to them. And I'm already very familiar with this dungeon in particular, so I can tell you essentially everything that's going to happen. There are going to be three bosses per dungeon, and when you defeat a dungeon on level 5, then it progresses to level 6, and essentially the Disperse. difficulty of the boss Disperse. becomes a lot more, uh, it becomes a lot higher. But the way that this, that this works is that you have these rings, limited time protection, known to attract gnomes uh, if left sitting too long. Pretty much that means that your opponent's also going to try and take these away from you because they don't need them, but you do. And the reason why you need them is because of the crowd pummeler boss. Melee and cannon attacks can knock player units off the platform. So essentially he can ring you out like in a really bad fighting game. But let's go ahead and try to, try to start this and see where it goes. So I'm going to throw Murlocs over here. Try to take this chest and this uh, this Meeting Stone. The Meeting Stone is a great way of being able to uh, to have a deploy point over here. So now we have easy access to this stuff over here. The shield does uh, give you, uh, you know, it, like, it essentially gives you uh, perfect protection. So there's not a lot that players can do uh, against those kind of targets. But I'm just going to go ahead and throw out my minis here so that way... When this unlocks, I can throw old Murkai. But honestly, I've got a lot of pressure that I'm pushing over here. But I'm going to go ahead and throw Murkai the moment that this thing uh, reveals itself. In order to showcase what happens when, uh, when you do this. So now that he's got this ring, he will go over here. He will beat up the boss. And he won't be affected by this move that essentially pushes people off the ledge. And these bosses are very easy to start out. But as you progress through the uh, the dungeon and you get a very special reward, which we'll get to once we beat it, uh, it, there's a reason why it increases in difficulty because this is a very effective way of being able to level up not just uh, your, your minis, but as well as leveling up your comp in general. At the end of the dungeon, you will be given a, a reward, which essentially gives you like a slot for your character. And those slots uh, can help upgrade specific minis, like you have undead slots you have beast slots you have uh unbound slots which is like the the minis that pop out of the ground you have a slot for essentially every single type of mini in the game and if you equip a mini that matches that slot then you will get an additional level on that mini throughout the game okay so playing my leader is not going to give me two whelps that seems like a really good idea so let's go ahead and 
try to beat the second boss. I'm going to see if we can get through this boss uh, without losing at all. But since it's only level 6, I don't think we have to worry too much about it since my character is level 10. Levels really are important in this in this game. Like, there are going to be mi minis that have weaknesses, for example. But the biggest thing about levels is that they increase your stats, and stats are very important in a game like this. So I'm going to throw this over here. Throw the old Murkai. That tower is probably going to become mine now. There are two types of towers, by the way. There are regular, uh, you know, arrow uh, towers, and then there are these special towers that deal, uh, that deal rocket damage. And rocket damage is honestly, like, really cool. But I got a lot of minis that are pushing out this way, and that's the reason why I'm taking up the towers, because these deal AoE damage, and I have a lot of swarm minions. But now that the swarms are pretty much protected, I'm gonna try and just deal some damage here. We are being a little bit damaged ourselves, but the tower is defending itself very well. Old Murkai will deal with these guys, because I think Old Murkai also has ranged attacks as well. Uh, we'll do this here in order to try and take over this. Although we should probably focus on mid in order to, to end the game. Every single time we throw out a beast, we get extra raptors, which is honestly massive. And the thing I really like about this game is how, like, you have to... Like, you can't just focus on one thing. You have to have uh, your attention split, so to speak. Just so that way you can try to pressure to the best of your abilities. But now that all these guys are down the middle... I will throw this. I also have a Polymorph spell, which can transform all of my enemies into sheep if I really want to get that last push, so I think I'll go ahead and do that. Not like it really mattered. But that's what happens when you beat dungeons. It's really important for you to beat dungeons, and we'll, and we'll showcase exactly what it is. It's those level-up things I was telling you about with your slots. But it'll be a lot easier just to showcase it when we beat the last boss. Now, this last boss is a little bit tricky, because you don't get to deal damage to the boss itself. Uh, spells cost one less. Deploying an uh, unbound deals damage to enemy minions. Okay, let's do this one because I think that the other one with Bloodlust isn't going to be good for this comp since I'm always going to have minions on the field. So this guy's got a special shield around him. And you, can and you can always read up on this. I think I know the perfect way in order to beat up on these guys. Uh, but using a, a welding beam to eliminate enemies nearby, control the switches to summon walking bombs for big damage. So you really don't get to deal a lot of damage to him, but these, like, light bulbs will pop up. You want to defeat the light bulbs. They can't be claimed by flying minions. Uh, but the bulbs, every single time they are destroyed, will summon a bomb to the other minion. So, very simply, these guys will emerge. We'll just show what happens when we destroy them. So... There we go, we destroy two of them, there's a bomb that goes that deals the damage, and you do that essentially for the whole round. So the whole point of this one is just to throw out as many mini, uh, as many minis uh, to deal with enemies, so that way you always have a mini on the field when one of the, one of the things emerge. Because the last thing that you want is for your opponent to take it, because then they deal damage to you, and they can still deal damage to your, to your face because uh, you don't have to shield yourself. But as you can see, this is working very effectively. There's a lot of gold that I can take whenever I want it. That guy's probably going to end up taking this one. But let's go ahead and make it a little bit harder. Uh, okay, looks like I destroyed it instead of him. That's massive. Throw these guys over here. The kobold for the gold immediately makes this feel a lot simpler than it actually is. But as you can see, like they're trying to damage him and they're not like doing anything in the process. So it's all about having as many minis as you can dealing that bomb damage. I literally don't think I've taken a damage. Uh, I don't think I've taken any damage from bombs yet, but maybe it's just because my attention is split. So knowing exactly what happens is kind of difficult in this game because you can't focus on everything all the time. There we go. Throw this guy over here as well for more. Like this Raptor ability is just so freaking powerful when it works. But he's almost dead. Gonna try and bomb me. Got, okay, so I got. I'm about to get bombed myself. Feels bad, but it's the way the world works. All right, one more bomb, and that should do it. So this guy over here, knock this out. That should be GG. I don't need to do any more actions because there's that bomb. It goes face. GG. Boombots always deal four damage. If you play Hearthstone, you know exactly what I'm talking about. 
But there you go. Now that we have defeated a dungeon, not only did we get dust uh, in order to help upgrade our minis, but now we get to have one of the most valuable things in this game, which is character slots, I believe is what they're called. I explained them a little bit earlier, but now that we get to see them in action, I get to claim my reward. Hopefully I get the leader one. Okay, I did not get the leader one, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. You have beast, you have spell, you have tank, you have cycle, you have essentially all of these different kinds of, uh, of traits and categories that minis can go into, and you get a special bonus for doing such. I could choose the beast one in order to make any beast that goes into this slot have an extra two levels. I have siege damage that I could be adding, or I could put a spell in here. I'm going to go ahead and just upgrade my beast because I'm not sure exactly how I want to fill these up. And I'm not sure if uh, you can get excess uh, slots that you can swap out uh, when you have uh, more than six. But that is something I will figure out as I complete more dungeons because as of right now, my most leveled up and most uh, decked out character, uh, once I finish this, and then it resets itself, I can go and do level 7. I have Hogger at level 12 right now, and they usually start at level 5. Uh, dungeons last for a week with a specific faction in mind, so this one's only beasts, and this is how you are able to upgrade your minis. The previous week, it was Unbound, so as of right now, I've got my Baron Rivendare sitting with four silvers and three, uh, uh, three bronzes, as well as my Blood Mage Thalnos. So case in point, if I were to swap these two, you will notice that he goes to level 15, and this guy goes up to level 13, so this does give an extra two levels to whatever is uh filling this spot and actually feels that requirement but that is pretty much dungeons in a nutshell then now that we've talked about dungeons there's one more game mode that we need to talk about as i claim another tome in order to increase my abilities and to uh, increase my minis power as well i always upgrade heroes and i always try to just upgrade whatever can be leveled up so boom now that we've done that, I'm going to mess up with uh, with my comp because there's a specific comp that I love using uh, in PvP to really bully people. So this is the comp that I have been using for competitive PvP, and as of right now, uh, I have a really decent MMR, but at the same time, MMR is kind of, you know, very unreliable right now because there's only so many people playing. But you have a lot of different ranks that you can attain uh, when you start at the very bottom. When you start at the very bottom, you're at the bronze ranks, and I don't know why all of these uh, characters are here. I I'm, I'm pretty sure this isn't everybody, and there's still me right here, so I'm not really sure exactly how this works. So you have, you know, the bright rank, you earn 500 honor, essentially MMR points, and you get tomes and gold for completing every single rank. So for 500, you get into the, brown uh, you get into the bronze ranks, uh, 1,000 for bronze 1, about 2,000 for Bronze 2, and then once you defeat Bronze 3, you then are upgraded into the Silver Strategist rank. And the difference between the Silver and the Bronze ranks is that at the Bronze ranks, everyone is hard capped at level 1, which is honestly how I believe PvP should be. I don't think that you should have your levels carry over, but as the game progresses and you get to uh, 3,000 MMR, your levels actually start to matter. So be careful on how you how you grind the PvP because one other thing to keep in mind is that your PvP rank is equal to the highest three uh, honor points that you have for your three heroes. So case in point, you have these three guys which make up this number right up here. But if you were to go into PvP with one of your other heroes that do not have uh, as much ranking as the other ones, you do not gain and you do not lose anything. So if you want to keep yourself below the 3000 MMR in order to get comfortable with the game, try out a whole bunch of heroes, try out different comps, you very much have that option to be a little bit more casual with the game and just focus more on the strategy instead of grinding out stats. But since I'm trying to be a content creator with this game and I'm trying to get the best ranks possible, I have just been going really hard with this Baron comp. As you can see, it's almost three times higher than every other comp that I have. But he is the one that I have as the, at the highest level, so let's go ahead and play a game of Baron, and we can see, well, I guess before that, we can go into this. We can see what PvE looks like. So you have a specific map, you have uh, guard towers, or you have like specific uh, towers that you can take over. Sometimes they will be... Uh, just regular summoning stones. Sometimes they'll be the rockets. Sometimes they'll be this one. 
And I'm not exactly sure what the modifiers are, but I'm pretty sure that modifiers are just like, you know, maybe like flying minions get extra attack or something like that. And something that's really interesting is that each of these, uh, each of these will last about, I think it's six weeks, but they are stagnated to where one is available for six weeks. And then two weeks later, one of these things will change. So every two weeks, uh, the, the, the metagame will essentially shift a little bit where case in point, uh, this used to be summoning stone, uh, like about a week ago or something like that. But since guard towers are now there, you can't just throw things to your, to the summoning stone, take them over. Because if you try to do that, you will be taking damage from the guard towers. So let's go ahead and show you exactly what a PVP match looks like. So your MMR should key you into somebody that is at the, uh, a similar rank than you. If you are someone that is in the bronze ranks, I highly doubt that you're going to get queued into, uh, someone that's a higher level. Just due to the fact that uh, this game is, you know, like you can't have level 1s fighting level 11. That's not how this works. So there are chests that gain you bonus gold, and I'm just going all in on mid in order to first of all gain that gold, and then gain the initiative. I will do this, and oh, he summoned a blizzard at the perfect time, actually. That was a really nice counter for my opponent. And honestly, he's a bit of a higher level than me, so unfortunately I am probably just going to lose this one. I can throw Harpies in order to deal with this guy since he doesn't have a way of dealing with flying minions. It looks like he is playing almost the exact same comp, except he has uh, this ghoul over here. Harpies are going to just take over uh, this thing over here, unless I throw this minion over here. They also have Poisonous, but luckily this can bounce between hordes. So my Harpies are going mid. I'll have to save my gold for now. He's got the Kobold. Hopefully I can knock it out before it gets any value, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to stop him. He's got the gold difference right now, which is absolutely massive, and I think I've actually already lost this game. So this is kind of like proving my point on how much I really don't like levels, because I would rather this become all about skill versus, you know, oh, I've got the higher number than you. But that's probably what's going to be happening with a game like this, because it gives you incentive to level up. Alright, yeah, I, I have lost this game. He's got the swarms. I, I barely have any gold to defend myself. I kind of wish that you could surrender at this point, but I'm just going to let him overtake me because there's just nothing I can do in order to stop this onslaught that I'm about to be receiving. Feels bad, but it, it, it's what happens. Alright, let's see if I can do that to one of my enemies. Because that's what you want to do. You want to overwhelm them. And something that I should point out is that just because you reach a rank threshold does not mean that there are rank floors in this game. I could very easily go from my current rank right now and fall out of uh, the silver category and go back into bronze if I really wanted to just fight a bunch of level 1 uh a bunch of level one minis and stuff like that. So uh, something else to keep in mind is that if I were to go with like a blood mage and play with them for a little bit, I would not lose or gain any ranks until he has a higher MMR than the Karen Bloodhoof. So that's one way that you can kind of like mess around with ranked to where you can play people seriously and really get a good feel at how good your comp is versus just going up against a lot of like random people doing like random things for like memes and whatnot. So that's something I do kind of like about the PVP system. But again, the level system factoring into battles is something I'm not particularly a fan of. We'll go ahead and do this again. Okay, so he's doing something really smart by taking my gold initiative away from me. And he's going to throw this guy here. So that way he essentially netted an extra four gold. And the gold difference really does matter in a game like this. Because uh, you get more resources essentially. And it's better to have more resources than not enough resources. Very simple concept, but let's go ahead and throw these behind here. Keep him uh, distracted. That probably is not a good idea because of the, the, the Necromancer there. But now that I have a little bit of some breathing room, I'm going to deny his gold right up here by destroying the Kobold. I do think it is that important. So we'll throw the Baron down mid in order to deal with the Pyromancer. He killed my Kobold, but a little bit late. This actually might be like a really good game to showcase like how decisions are really important in this game. But this should probably just knock him out over here. Got another one of those guys. 
He's taken all of the chests, which is really massive, by the way. Throw harpies over this way. Because now we're going to be pressuring the middle very effectively. He's going to be taking the gold. I kind of can't stop him. So this is, again, why it's so important to take the gold. Because now he can throw more things at me in bigger waves. Versus just throwing one minion at a time. One minion at a time is just not how you win with this game. So that's why you have to try and do things in combination with each other. But every now and again, you have a big boy like Baron, and he's just really good to get that value from. So I'm going to do this in order to hit the chest. Hopefully I don't get bombed in the process. Uh, I will throw this down over here in order to knock this out with a little bit more ease. Looks like we're able to start taking over a, uh, a tower. Okay, maybe not. But yep, there's the bomb. Nailed it. Harpies can go down this way. Although I'm gonna have to start. I can, okay, this is this is probably a good way of like utilizing the banshee. Utilize the banshee so that these uh, these guys get uh, neutralized. It is now mine. Mind control is super busted in this game. Because he spent, I think, about six gold on that. And now I have uh, a better gold economy, so to speak. So that's right. You have you have to do math in this game. There is math that's important to think about. I'm starting to come back a little bit. But I'm kind of hoping that this game goes into overtime. Because then I can show you guys how games never end in a tie. Games will quite literally never end in a tie, and that is based on the design of this game, not just because, like, oh, whoever runs out of time, uh, whoever has the higher health is going to win. There's actually a reason for it. Okay, so I have to worry about these guys threatening me. Um, I, just, I just have to control. If I can control, then I'm fine. So we'll do this in order to knock out the, the Pyromancer. Throw these guys over there at the last second. That was really smart on my end. That's right, I'm a smart gamer. Gamer smart. Okay, blowing up that. I still get the chest though, so you're not stopping my, my value. You're not stopping my econ. So now that we're in overtime, gold, uh, it, it, you get gold twice as fast. So this is like a way that you can like really start to pressure your opponent, like kind of like what he did over here as I wait for a little bit of a different approach, because I might be able to deal some really aggressive damage. I'm going to try and mind control this. I will do this in order to keep him occupied. Uh, but he actually did that in order for this guy to get mind controlled instead. So that was actually really smart for my opponent. I'm, I am really feeling the pressure here right now. Uh, maybe because I threw everything out this way is why I'm about to lose. Yeah, because he's about to deal a lot of damage to my base. Hopefully we can still make it to the 10 seconds so I can show you guys why it's important uh, to have control. Just throwing out more of those guys. So I need I need to just kill face now. So now that there's 10 seconds left, your HP will start to go down. I think I lost this game, unfortunately. Or let's go. Let's go. I don't. Okay. All right. I, I had more HP. I had more HP. If you have one more HP, that's good enough. And that is what happens when there are 10 seconds left. There are no ties in this game. There are no draws. There are only victories. And I'm only going to have victories when I play this game. So now to see how good I actually am, let's do one more game just to show you guys exactly how the PvP works. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to put stuff in the comments. I will do my best in order to try and answer as many questions in the comments as possible. Because I really like this game. And I want to have... Uh, I want to try and help more people learn this game in case there's any questions that you might have, because this is not an easy game. It's it's really not. All right. Okay, so we got to see three different heroes. Perfect. In fact, I'm actually very scared of Maev comps. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Maev is coming down that way. Looks like he's going to go for a little bit of an aggressive start, but I'm going to do this in order to get um, the gold advantage. I will keep throwing stuff to the mid. Because if this guy can get here fast enough, you can actually throw stuff out of range. Why is Maev going that way? Alright, let's go. Maev deals AoE, but is weak to melee damage. This guy only focuses on towers because he's a siege minion. Uh, he's going for the gold. I don't particularly care about that. Oh my god, that Maev strike was so massive. Uh, I think I'm just going to go a bit aggressive here. Yeah, get rid of that Maev. Dealing a lot of damage to his face now. 
Probably just throw this guy in order to get the chests when they emerge. Case in point. Timing is also very important in a game like this. Wolf is a, a, an advantage. He's gonna start getting the gold advantage since he's really uh, locking out the gold, but at least I've got the, uh, the chests as an advantage. But yep, there we go. Got more gold now. Maiev is gonna do his swing ability. I will do this in order to pressure the Maiev. And now that I have my skeletons nearby my Baron, they have bloodlust because of my Baron's ability. I might try to like take over this tower, but honestly, going going for face is kind of working right now. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. And I'll do this in order to have the kobold uh, take the gold just in case I need it. Uh, I will throw out Baron in order to get the chest. I'm really just trying to focus on gold with this comp. And now that I think he's like trying to save for like a big push of some kind, because he has not thrown anything in quite some uh, quite some time. So we'll do this. By the time that she gets down there, I should be fine to throw out some skeletons. Oh wait, I, I forgot to switch the uh, the switch. That's on me. So we'll harpies. We'll put these guys over here. And that honestly should win the game. Yeah! There we go! There we go, dude. Alright, not bad for a 2 out of 3. Should I keep going? Let me see how close I am to my uh, to my rank up, and then I'll see. Alright, so if I keep doing this, I'm going to hit a wall. But all I would really need to do is win about 3 more games in order to rank up. And then I will get uh, three. Uh, I will get six hundred extra gold. And the best thing about this is that when you look at the shop and you see how much gold is, like you're essentially getting like a five dollar reward for completing different uh, rank floors. Like you get more gold the higher up that you get, and you get better prizes. You know, uh, depending on what level that you are. But that's pretty much everything that you need to know to get started in Warcraft Rumble. The bit, like the biggest piece of advice that I can give to newer players is just do the story until you get stuck. Then you can start doing uh, some dungeons as well in order to help upgrade your heroes. Because like honestly, dungeons are probably one of the most important things to be doing in order to level up your base hero. And since this is available for like a week, there are definitely going to be like strategy guides that come out from the community in case you guys are, are stuck on a certain level or you want to uh, discuss certain comps that would work in those certain levels. And one other thing that you can do that I haven't really talked about because I'm not sure about all of the uh, the benefits of this, but there are guilds. And honestly, I, I did not invite any of these people. You can make a guild and people will just randomly join your guild. So if you have a funny name or if you have like a meme or something, then people might just join it for that. My name is Clark Hellscream, so I just named my guild for the Horde because I wanted to fully go in on the Horde uh, applications and the and the, uh, and the Horde comps. But unfortunately, they are just not my playstyle for right now, and I haven't been leveling up them uh, as effectively. But this is one reason why uh, being in a guild can be useful, because if you have a lot of people that are helping you out with this, I'm pretty sure that, that this is what it's for. But yeah, shared seasonal rewards. Each war chest crest, uh, uh, earn war chest crests to unlock rewards for the whole guild. Uh, you can play arc like surge, which earns family crest based on the army leader uh, that you complete missions with. You can earn PVP honor. Your highest rank leader in each family crest gives uh, uh, it earns crests every two hundred honor. Crests are automatically granted based off of your leader's honor at the start of a PvP season. Crests do not transfer when joining a new guild. Rewards can only be claimed once per account. So this is one reason why guilds can uh, why guilds can be a little bit effective because you have first of all a reason to play with friends. Second of all, you get rewards for doing such, and some of these rewards are really important. Like I'm not sure how much energy this gives, but this is a mini that is only available by getting a really high PvP rating or by completing it in the uh, in the guilds. And honestly, the only reason why I'm able to get this during this season is because of guilds. So I believe that is everything that I needed to go over. The map, you have lots of different maps that are available, uh, different bosses from different parts of the Warcraft universe. You have your armies with your minis, with about 54 minis that have started uh, on the launch of the game. There might be 55 when something gets released at BlizzCon, if anything gets released at BlizzCon. And then you have the shop. There are daily, uh, daily offers, daily, um, or I should say weekly uh, bundles, that incentivize you to just go ahead and spend like $10 every now and again. Uh, I would probably recommend getting some of these every now and again because they have experience bonuses. 
So like having experience bo uh, bonuses is just really important for some of your minis in order to get maximum amounts of value. Uh, but obviously, you know, only spend money if you're able to afford it. But that is, I believe, everything that I wanted to talk about with Warcraft Rumble. So let me know what you guys think about this video, if it helped you, if it helped explain some concepts a little bit easier. Because when I started out with this game, it seemed very overwhelming and it seemed like there was a lot of things to learn. But overall, the game is fun. Strategy is very important. Uh, being able to grind PvE is something that you can do over and over again if you are one of those types of players that doesn't necessarily want to be competitive or go up against other people that might have invested more time into the game. But regardless, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any comments, any questions about Warcraft Rumble, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll try my best in order to answer as many of them as possible. But thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. Thank you for Blizzard for giving me exclusive access to this game a month before it came out and we'll see you for the next video.